It's a side of Flo Rida you may not know about. The alleged absentee father who refuses to acknowledge his 19-month-old son. You what? We all know about the bright side of fame. After all, it's fed to us in a continuous 24-hour news cycle on every type of screen imaginable. But for every news story that shines a light on all the positive aspects of celebrity, there are two that have fallen through the cracks because they cast the industry in a less than favorable light. These stories deal with the dark side of fame, and that's exactly what this series is all about. For today's episode, we're focusing on the story of Flo Rida, whose hit track Low was released back in 2007 and took the entire world by storm so much so that we had to put up with a whole string of generic singles from him for the next seven years or so. I can't freestyle. Oh no, no. I guess I'm gonna leave it up the mojo. On the bright side of fame, many of Flo Rida's early singles charted extremely highly and low would find itself atop the Billboard charts for 10 straight weeks, which no matter what way you cut it is wildly impressive. After breaking all kinds of digital sales records, Flo Rida even found himself being invited to some of the biggest events possible, like performing at WrestleMania in his home state of Florida. No, not Florida. Flo, Flo Rida. You know what it is. You're a big wrestling man? Big wrestling fan. But on the dark side of fame is a different story altogether. And Flo Rida, well, he's got some explaining to do. Not only has he dropped out of multiple scheduled performances after already being paid to appear, but he's also dealt with a DUI in the past, owing the federal government a whole bunch of back taxes, and most tragically, refuses to have a relationship with any of the children he has fathered over the past few years, even going so far as to call one of his kids with a severe health condition an evil child. Yeah, he really said that. He called my baby an evil child. And those were his exact words. So I hope you guys will join me as I take a look at Flo Rida's plunge into the dark side of fame. It was popping guys, your boy Marlon Palmer. Recent drops in this series have included looks at the Kardashians and Blueface, which was a crazy story and continues to be. So please check those videos out. Since this show works off of requests, don't forget to leave us some ideas with who you want to see next. Flood those comment sections with the names you want to see next, and I'll see you guys after the intro. The first sign that Flo Rida might not be the man we all thought he was happened back in 2011 when he failed to appear at a music festival in Australia despite the fact that he had already been paid his $55,000 fee to do so. When the Aussie company that paid him couldn't track him down to serve him with a lawsuit for breach of contract, they posted a link to the Australian court's documents on Flo Rida's Facebook page. <laughs> Imagine getting sued on Facebook. But in the US, it's necessary to serve someone with a summons in person or else they won't be bound to the lawsuit. Thus, Flo Rida dodged an early bullet when the suit against him was dismissed because posting papers to Facebook was not considered proper service. You can't sue people on Facebook, you can poke them. He might have gotten away with one there, but later that year he wouldn't. Back in June of 2011, Flo Rida was arrested in Miami Beach and charged with a DUI as well as driving with a suspended license after the Miami Beach police observed him swerving while driving in his 2000 eight Bugatti through traffic. When he was stopped by authorities, he was asked to give a sobriety test. And his response, I can't do this. I don't think I can walk a straight line. I had a few drinks. I live on the other side of the bridge. I can make it home. A spokesperson for the Miami police would later reveal that Flo's blood alcohol level was a .185, which is over twice the legal limit in Florida. As the police were arresting Flo, apparently a large crowd of bystanders gathered and tried to convince the cops to let him go, with some even offering to drive the rapper home themselves. But the police weren't having it. Flo Rida got booked. Flo was put behind bars for a short period of time and his bail was set at $2,000. Eventually, Flo Rida would enter into a plea deal for first time offenders and enter a program known as Back on Track, where he performed community service and took DUI classes. But Flo Rida wasn't quite out of trouble with authority figures yet, because as it turns out, around this time, Flo also owed nearly $2 million in back taxes from his earnings from 2009 to 2011. In 2014, a lien was then placed on him, but he managed to pay everything off in time. Yet another close call for Flo Rida in which he once more escaped repercussions for his actions. Seems to be a running theme going on here. A few years later, in 2016, Flo Rida and Dr. Dre was scheduled to appear at a charity fundraising event at the Playboy Mansion. Both parties worked out a deal where they would be able to invite their close friends and receive not only free cabana rentals as compensation, but backstage passes as well. But here's the thing, when it came time for the actual party, Dre and Flo Rida were nowhere to be seen. Only their entourages showed up and then proceeded to trash the place. 
The charity group then sued both rappers for the value of the amenities, which was close to $400,000, as well as additional money for lost profits and punitive damages. Despite the fact that this event raised money for six different charities, Flowrider simply couldn't be bothered to show up despite pledging to help out. Once again, a running theme. As bad a look as many of these events are, none of it compares to how Flowrider treats the baby mamas in his life. It all started back in 2011, when a woman named Gloria Holloway would claim that Flo was the father of her child and sought for child support. Flowrider immediately denied the paternity and underwent a test to determine if he was the father. In a shocking turn of events, the results revealed that he was not the father of this young child, dodging the bullets again. He's, he's an escape artist. You are not the father. Flowrider then used these results by filing them with the Florida Department of Revenue to block Holloway from ever obtaining child support against him. Man, nothing seems to stick to this guy. But then only a couple years later, yet another woman came forward. This time it was Natasha Williams, who claimed to have sex with Flowrider in nearly every city across the country. That's... That's damn impressive, even on tour. Flo never disputed hooking up with this smoke show, but he remained unconvinced that he was her only partner, even asking her to get an abortion when she first told him about the news. Listen, if someone's having sex with you in literally every city in the United States, I don't think they have time, fam. To compound matters further, Natasha was seeking good fortune support, which is a special kind of child support, in Florida for rich people's kids. Once more, a paternity test was ordered, but this time Flo finally came out on the wrong side of things. The test revealed that there was a 99.9% chance that Flo was the father. Q Mori, you are the father. The two then came to a private child support settlement months later. Little did he know that things were about to get a whole lot worse. Because only a couple years later, yet another woman came forward to once more complain that Flo Rida had gotten her pregnant, only to abandon her. And man, this story, listen, you might want to get a snack. Alexis Adams first met Flo Rida on the West Coast sometime in 2015. They struck up a friendship that eventually turned into something more. But with her living on the West Coast and Flo on the East Coast, they didn't see one another all that much. In 2016, Alexis discovered she was pregnant and when she told Flo what was up, he didn't exactly respond that well. After telling Flo Rida she was pregnant in 2016, the rapper seemed to indicate he wanted her to have an abortion. From that point on, their relationship quickly deteriorated. Flo once more went back to his one and only solution of asking Alexis to have an abortion, but she was unwilling to do so. He then began to send horrendous insults to her and her unborn child. He called my baby an evil child. And those were his exact words. During the course of her pregnancy, Alexis and Flo barely spoke to one another. Eventually, Alexis discovered that she was having a high-risk pregnancy as her unborn child was diagnosed with hydrocephalus, a disease that involves spinal fluid filling cavities in the brain. By the time she finally gave birth, Alexis was only communicating with Flo Rida through attorneys and the rapper was informed about the birth of his son, Zohar, through his lawyers. During the difficult early months of Zohar's life, Alexis was drawn into a legal battle with Flo Rida, looking for child support and health insurance coverage. This time it was Alexis who demanded the paternity test and she was proven right when it came back once more with a 99% likelihood of Flo Rida being the father. Flo Rida finally began paying child support for Zohar in March of 2017, reportedly paying around $5,000 a month, which is far less than Alexis was seeking. He also verbally consented to Alexis being the granted the full custody of their child. Perhaps worse of all though, when Zohar went under the knife in 2018 for extremely dangerous brain surgery, Flo Rida never even contacted Alexis once to see how his son was doing. Jeez. Honestly, I don't even know what to say about having a child with special needs and it's undisputably hard and Alexis is a true hero for having to forge forward alone. So, if Alexis is a hero, what exactly does that make Flo Rida? Well, I think you guys know. I don't even need to say it. Maybe we'll just let Wendy Williams sum this up. She does that so well. You've got two kids, and even if they were one night stands, you have to watch who you run up in. Couldn't have said it better myself. I hope you guys have gotten something out of this look at Flo Rida's brush with the dark side of fame, even if that something is realizing how much of a tool Flo Rida can be. Be sure to let me know what you thought in the comments down below, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram at Before They're Famous to vote on what's next, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.